Hello everyone, this is Coach again from Celestial Rhythms. Glorious times ahead. The best is yet to come. That's the theme of this week. Yesterday, Tuesday, the sun crossed 17 degrees Sagittarius. It's now in the territory of hexagram 26. The taming power of the great. Heaven below, within the mountain, which is a powerful energy of holding something in space, holding it together, controlling it, restraining the power and therefore making it far stronger. It is the this area in the zodiac, if you see it, this is the overlay of the 64 hexagrams of the I Ching. You can find that on my website, thecosmoswithin.org. You click on Zodiac and I Ching and the tabs, then you get to this page, which gives you then also the breakdown of the exact marks, degree, minutes, seconds of arc where the hexagrams start and end and where each, each line begins and ends. That's all information which was delivered through the human design systems channeling in 1987 which is a powerful system which barely has been tapped into by astrologers. I'm definitely one of those who has started working with that system early on and I'm promoting it as you know in my work. So if we go back here to the chart 17 degrees Sagittarius that's kind of the heart piece of Sagittarius, the most Sagittarian in a way you could say, the most powerfully aligning the energies, kind of bring them into cohesion, into a into a streamline, streamlining them, bringing them all onto the same target mm, that strong Sagittarian energy of direction the arrow is the glyph for it very meaningful so this is a six day period when where the sun is in that hexagram and it so happens that this is also the hexagram where President Trump's moon and his south node is in, just quickly here showing you that's President Trump's chart, here you see the moon and here you see the lunar south node in that same area of the zodiac, so this is a very empowering week for him also there's the 24th degree of Scorpio here in midheaven, the 24th degree of Taurus at midnight. And again, if we go back, this is the axis of the president, just reversed. I remember in September 2017, that was just two weeks after the big, great um, American solar eclipse you might remember that when you could see the sun's eclip being eclipsed by the moon all over the United States. That was on August 21st. When that, two weeks after that eclipse, there were the two largest solar flares in the last few years that were. I'm remembering one was an X-class flare and the other one was a very high level M-class flare, the really two large flares. 
and they both featured the 24 degree Taurus and Sagittarius, um, Taurus and uh, Scorpio axis. And at the time I was musing that when Jupiter would get into this axis, then uh, that would be a very important time. I missed that President Trump, really that's his major consciousness axis. So really in retrospect, I have to say, and you can go back uh, through my YouTube channel, you will find those recordings where I give you all the charts and the details. So it seems in retrospect this was really strengthening the president's backbone. That were the energies of those two big solar flares. They were aligning the cosmic bigger energies in a way which would allow this man to survive all that hardship and all that confrontation he has been assigned to in that position to remain strong to have that resource from within and anybody who is watching the president uh, can agree i mean it's unbelievable how much energy this man has and after all he's 70 four years old most people of that age they are retired they are just um, uh, enjoying life sitting back and enjoying what they have um, accomplished in their lives so this is remarkable in many ways just wanted to throw this in so let's go back to this um, chart here of um, when this energy was activated when this week began in a way this six day period with hexagram 26 at the forefront so what we see is the moon here trining the fourth house cusp and also trining that big stellium of Pluto, Jupiter, Saturn and Palace, Chariklo, that stellium which I have been talking about for many, many times in the last few months, which is kind of the the symbol, I could say, of that big war which is going on, that spiritual war of bringing the truth into the center of the stage. Hexagram 61, where Pluto still is in, where in January the starter of this year, the really energetic baseline of this year was set with Pluto and Saturn's conjunction on January 10 respectively January 12 heliocentrically which set the stage which was making it very clear this would be a, a year of confrontation of war although many people are not even aware that this war is happening because it's so concealed it's only apparent to those who are looking behind the curtains also, in this week's chart, we have Astrea and Juno high up here. Astrea, very exact. Astrea, again, is the asteroid goddess, named after the asteroid goddess, I should say, who was still remaining on this Earth after things had gone sour. All the other gods escaped up to Mount Olympus. Astrea stayed behind and helped resolve the problems and issues, rolling her sleeves back and getting onto the problems and resolving all the all the difficult theme, themes and 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 struggles um, and helping people. Juno is the other asteroid which shows up over and again in this year's key charts Juno representing teamwork partnership supporting one another patriotism I would say in a national way said so 
awakening to this and really um, seeing the value of standing together, many pillars are necessary to hold up a big roof. That's the idea. Opposed by Sedna, naturally, still Sedna, another key player of this year, about constraint and that whole lockdown was definitely a Sedna theme, being restricted to our own homes in our separate spaces, having time to go within and to look at everything in a new way, do research and whatnot. Setna is still very prominent, however, in a trine. So um, it is a basically very beneficial energy we are seeing. And it's getting, getting ever more clear, as I mentioned in the beginning of the title of this week's show. Here, glorious times ahead. Yes, indeed. Anybody who's really following the true storyline can see it's manifesting we are breaking through so let me just back up a little bit i want to go back to the annular eclipse of june 21st which happened at zero degrees cancer right at the solstice point this is rare this was extremely powerful the last time we had an eclipse in that spot that was in june 2001, just months prior to the 9-11 events. So this was clear from the onset that this would be a very big year, a very powerful events would unfold in these 12 months following June 21st. What I want to point out in this chart is the rising degree for Washington DC we have TX 300 which I just talked about in my last video which is one of these unnamed Cooper belt objects was discovered in 2002 has the designation TX 300 is is very slow moving is right now aligned with the black moon just going quickly back here to show you that's where it is right now at five degrees ten here very close to the back black moon that's why i said the shadow is very enlarged exaggerated right now tx 300 is um bold and rude in a way and naturally, what we have seen in this year so far in the United States is exactly that. It's been wild and unprecedented. With Uranus here too, naturally, this is um, enlarging it. Now, it so happens that TX300 will have an exact conjunction with Uranus on December the 22nd at 6 degrees 50 and something in um, Taurus. I just want to show you this chart quickly. I think it's this one here. No, it's the next one. Which one was it? I have too many charts open here on my... Oh, okay, now I have to wait. Just give me one sec. I clicked the wrong thing here, so... My computer wants to do something else here. Come on. It's such so slow sometimes. Okay. Anyway, this is another important chart. That's the one when the galactic center is when the sun is lining up with the galactic center on December the 18th. As we're on this chart, let's talk about it for a minute. This is another powerful nodal point each year when the sun is lined up with the galactic center. Okay, here we go, come. Okay, here we go. Okay, so, and Jupiter is rising 
on December 18 again for Washington. This is very, very auspicious. So the chart I really wanted to show you was this one here. Okay, now I found it. <laughs> 656, you see that's a black moon Uranus conjunction on the 22nd of December. That is a day I'm expecting to be quite wild in a way of opening the curtain, allowing all the many people who are still asleep to see something they are probably quite shocked by. This is that Uranus Black Moon energy, which also is a trademark of the whole new beginning of the Jupiter Saturn cycle, the 20 year period we're getting into, which adds yet another dimension to what this may express as Uranus as being the ruler of Aquarius. Very important, that alignment, the black moon about all the unknowns and the um, pitfalls and and um, unexpected twists and turns these coming two decades will bring with the opening um, in a way unprecedented on our planet, that kind of galactic reunion we are moving into now fast into the extraterrestrial agenda all that there's so much there um uh, and yeah i will definitely speak more about that in another video particularly on that theme but on that mundane first level this is a shock of sorts some unexpected turn of events we can expect around the 22nd and I guess it's very clear this was anchored in the solar eclipse chart of June the 21st as this is dead on the ascendant. This is the same chart for June 21st 2020, the solar annular eclipse for Greenwich, that is the global chart. What I want to point out here is the three degrees Leo rising, three degrees Aquarius, seventh house cusp. This is the next chart I just quickly want to throw in, I definitely will get back to that on a later date. This is another very important nodal point which is happening every six months when the Earth is either at its farthest place from the Sun, which is the aphelion, or its closest in January, which is perihelion. These two moments have extremely powerful predictive potential as it's the relation the earth has with the sun which is redefined on that day which happens to be the American nation's birthday which in itself um, points out that the American nation is a leading force in evolution otherwise it wouldn't have happened that the nation's birthday would coincide with that important day I mean it's not every year on the 4th of July it can waver anyway between the 2nd and the 5th but it is in that window when a reset happens every year so what I want to point out here is Again, the three degrees Leo, three degrees Aquarius, Ascendant, Descendant. Just uh, go back here for a se second. You see it's exactly the same to the minute Ascendant. We had in Greenwich, when the solar eclipse in June was exact, 
which is now brought to the American nation's capital on that other critical moment. So it's kind of um, telling us something that this is an important axis and it indeed is as Jupiter and Saturn are aligning at zero degrees Aquarius here just 10 days from now. And also, as you see, again, coming back to yesterday's chart, when the sun entered hexagram 26, taming power of the great. Again, this same axis. This tells us something that, yes, um, this is a most important week we are in right now. Many, many powerful things are happening in this window including the solar eclipse of the 14th of December, which won't be visible from here in North America, but nevertheless the energy will be present everywhere. Yes, the, the, that's, well, I don't want to talk about that chart right now. I want to skip right over to this chart. Just to give you a little preview, to give some substance to my um, big headline here of this week, Glorious Times Ahead. So this is January the 2nd, 2021. This is the next great reset point for Earth's, Earth's relationship with the Sun, Earth's relationship with the bigger cosmos in that sense for Washington DC. Again, we see the same degree pretty much rising four degrees Aquarius. Again, we see the 25th degree this time of Scorpio in midheaven. And also we see again Jupiter very, very close to the ascendant. This is expansion. This is really that energy of entering a new age, a new timeline, a new paradigm, something unprecedented. And again, I just want to say once more that Uranus here um, at squaring the ascendant, descendant axis, it will feel like an earthquake. Sometimes there will be so um, profound shifts and changes and it will be upsetting on some level or at least needing some serious adjustment. There will be aspects of what is coming which won't be easy to deal with. It will be it's not all just wonderful. It is an adjustment. It is a period. It's also interesting to know, I want to throw this in here just at the tail end quickly, much more on that coming. The hexagram where Jupiter and Saturn will meet on the, um, this is the heliocentric chart. Uh, let's see if I have the other one open here too. And that's actually just there uh, for those who haven't heard that yet. That was just in the fourth night of the elections. In heliocentric astrology, Jupiter and Saturn had their exact conjunction already. Energetically, the stage was set. It just takes a little longer for it to fully manifest, to fully come, uh, to come full circle here as seen from Earth's perspective. However, let me just see if I have that chart open at all. Um, no, I don't think I, I don't think I have that open. But just want to say, um, it is the um, it is hexagram. Okay, let's go back to this one. You see here, tier one forty nine Aquarius. So hexagram sixty which is um, 
restraint. Now I will get sub pressed again. Yep, here we go. Restraint. Let's just quick see. I want to show you quickly. Limitation is the better word. Restraint or limitation? Limitation is an interesting one. It shows that we are getting into an area of so many new possibilities that we literally have to be very mindful in adding on one thing at a time. It has to be done in a very structured way to implement all the new storylines, the new dimensions into this paradigm of our reality to not go crazy. So this is very meaningful that these 20 years coming will be guided, led, founded by this energy of being very, very cautious and not overwhelming our reality with too much new at once. So this is it for now. I would um, uh, I thank you for being here and listening and um, talk to you soon. Love you all. <laughs>